The 2023 Conference on Land Policy in Africa has been held in the African Union headquarters from November 21 through November 24, 2023. The multiple crises facing Africa call for active efforts in addressing the challenge and harnessing the opportunities they offer. The conference conferred on African land governance and land policies. Many research papers presented by pertinent stakeholders in the areas of land management and policies during the Session. Most studies showed that Africa has poor land governance system that created cause for Africa's poor growth and development pace. Due to lack of proper land utilization, the continent is suffering from food insecurity, malnutrition, corruption, illegal migration, weak continental and regional integration, unfair land distribution, lack of infrastructure, and promising agricultural products. Africa's diverse cultures have given rise to numerous customary land tenure systems. The system them are rooted in traditional practices and community norms and often informal and unwritten. Understanding and documenting customary land rights are essential for recognizing and protecting the rights of local communities. Documenting customary and statutory land access, control, and ownership in Africa requires careful consideration of legal, cultural, and social factors. The recognition and protection of land rights are crucial for sustainable land management and social harmony in Africa. Documenting both customary and a statutory land access control and ownership is vital to avoid conflict, secure tenor, and empower communities, mostly women. Land access control and ownership issues are critical issues in Africa where both customary and statutory system coexist. France's sub-team explores both practice for documenting land rights in the continent with particular focus on customary and statutory land tenure system. The wave of formalization of customary land rights has been witnessed across many African countries. This could partly be in response to African Union declaration on land issues and challenges in Africa. Under the declaration, member states are urged to review their land sectors with a view to develop comprehensive policies which take into account peculiar needs. The United Nations declarations on rights of indigenous peoples 2007 have called out the need to secure indigenous people's land rights. Global land systems are increasingly shaped by a national trade of agricultural products. Trade ensures food security and helps countries overcome constraints in land meeting their food requirements in terms of quantity and diversity. Globally, trade can result in land saving if production takes place in regions with relatively more efficient land use. African Union member states have signed and ratified the African uh, Continental Free Trade Area and are in the process of implementing it with the objective of optimizing the intra-African trade in agriculture, agro-food, as well as other manufactured products. African Continental Free Trade Area will catalyze diversification and industrialization in the continent, but it requires all-inclusive land governance. OBN Horn of Africa's Talk to OBN program has talked to participants of African Land Policy Conference at African Union headquarters during the events. I'm from Kenya and I work for an organization called the Land Development and Governance Institute, a member of the International Land Coalition. I'm here because the discussion is important to the constituencies that I represent and I'm a professional in the area of land governance. Okay, uh, things raised here are uh, mainly Africa has uh, poor uh, land governance, poor policies in the areas of land uh, administration. Uh, uh, what, is, what is your insight from, from the presentations from the conference? Yeah, Africa is facing many challenges because of the backgrounds, mainly of the foreign systems that were introduced by the Europeans and the colonizers, but uh, they also clash with the tra communal, traditional, original systems of community and the, the, the new market systems um, play around those systems and the, the, the people using the land have their rights um, being uh, challenged and they become insecure and some of them become landless because they have no title deed and the market forces of buying and selling sometimes disadvantage some communities. So the, 
the, the, the conflicts, the disputes that come around land come because of these systems and they affect the development of the community and the benefits of the people. And when international companies come to invest, they come and invest regardless of the, or without respect of the safeguards of the community interest and the livelihood of the people and without a concern of the environment that the people live in and their social culture systems of uh, uh, engagement. So they endanger these systems. So our concern here is to get policies that are homebred, that, are, that reflect the African needs and that balance between the economics and the social and the environmental so that there is sustainability. Because people are important. We want policies that are people-centered that take care of people needs, that take care of the children, the women, and the growth of the family unit as the basic unit for development. Not policies that bring infrastructure and take money out, but the families and the community are left at a disadvantage. So that's our focus, to get our people at the center of development while safeguarding their primary resource, which is land. Okay, uh, to what extent would this uh, land governance play a role in uh, execution of African continental free trade area? Yes, it's important because investments do happen on land. Industries happen on land. Large-scale farming happens on land. Uh, any form of even technological um, uh, centers, technology hubs, happen on land. Infrastructure happens on land, even if it is railway. So land is at the center. It is a foundation. So for this uh, uh, framework to work, it has to have safeguards and ensure the benefits that come with trade go down to the owners of the land where the real development happens. And when the investments are coming, they must be investments that cause development uh, of the owners of the land and their land. What we are talking about is that the investments must be made in a, such a way that the land sovereignty is not lost uh, to the companies that invest uh, that are owned elsewhere. So they must carry a benefit that also benefits Africa as a continent. The market that the framework provides is a good opportunity, but that market uh, is for goods and services that are produced on land. Because land is the, uh, the primary factor of production for whether services or goods. So it's important. Land is the anchor, the success of the agreement uh, will, will ultimately be measured on what is done on land. Okay, my name is Mutlana Lolebepe. I'm from South Africa, a member of the National Land Coalition in South Africa, and also links to the organization called Inclusive Development Association, which is a land rights advocacy organization. Uh, okay, uh, what is this conference all about? For me, this conference for me it tries to establish a link between free trade in Africa and the land and in my case it's more about free trade and women's land rights uh, okay uh, once this land governance issue is uh, I mean addressed Africa will address this food insecurity uh, poor nutrition I mean do you agree it's a yes and no in the sense that Unless women are brought into the picture, I don't think issues of food security will ever be realized because the production will be focusing more on, you know, trading, you know, selling the external, the external market. But if once we bring the women's land rights on board, that is where the issues of food security will be realized because already we do have women in our respective countries who are already farming, though they don't have secure land tenure, some are farming in their backyards to ensure that their families are fed and so forth. And my prayer and hope is that from this conference, at least as different civil society and government, we go and ensure that the policies that are developed on land, they work for women, they secure women's land rights so that they can also produce for home consumption and also sell domestically and even outside their boundaries. Okay, this uh, land governance also uh, paves the way for uh, regional integration and continental integration and maybe trade exchange among member uh, African states and nations. Uh, to what extent would this play? For me, I think it's something which 
is good and it will happen because already we do have some women who are already trading along the borders of each and every member state and that will also make it easy for them that they, they will be able to even trade across their borders and so forth. Then through this conference, I, I already heard that the, some countries have already started to develop the free trade action plans and so forth. But my worry is those plans are being developed without the grassroots, the women who are directly affected by every decision that is taken at policy level, continental and even national level. Then I think it will help only if women are brought on board. They must be active participants in the policies and the action plans that are being developed and in that way those will incorporate their aspirations and they will also be the active players in the continental economy. So my name is Gad Asoweya Kwensivye from Ghana. Um, I work in the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources but I've just um, resigned to do my own thing, um, to do what um, this conference is for instance is about. Um, improving on land tenure in Africa. Well, uh, how do you summarize uh, I mean, the presentations, uh, the conference? Um, on the whole, it has been very well. Um, it, has, uh, it has met my expectation. Um, there are so many things that I've learned, um, and it only goes to tell that in Africa we have similar problems, and so the solution that your brother has um, has a lot of um, input or impact on um, that that we have in another country. So I have just learned, for instance, that um, most of the courts in Zambia, in Kenya, in Rwanda are clogged with land cases. And it's similar to what I'm finding in my country, where 52% of new land cases that are listed in the law courts are land related just tells me that we have similar problems and so if Zambia has a solution to it then Ghana automatically also can benefit from it so there's a lot that I'm learning from this conference and so far it has been very good well um, is I think it's a matter of getting the land owners involved um, I think you would know by now that um, in this on this continent, about 80% to 90% of the land are customary lands. And so you cannot be dealing with land without involving the local people. You must definitely involve the local people, involve the people who really matter, involve the women, the vulnerable groups, the youth who, de who need land for uh, farming and for other purposes. You can only get inclusive governance by involving these people and making sure that you put their um, concerns in the decision making. I think largely um, one major problem or challenge that I find is the fact that the capacity to implement most of the decisions tend to be lacking. So we have very nice policies, we have very nice laws, but then when it comes to the implementation, you find out that we do not have the quality skills that we need to be able to implement um, these programs. And so you end up, we end up spending so much on consultancy. We get our um, brothers from Europe to come and do the work and they take all the money back. It's important that we are able to build capacity in Africa so that the implementation of such policies are made by Africans. And that's something that I can talk about. I'm Marisa Balas. I'm from Mozambique. I'm here because I have a huge interest in land policy, specifically African land policies. And I'm researching on women's access to land, and therefore this is a, the best conference to be at. Well, as African countries, they, they struggle to, to fight so many difficulties dealing with land governance. Gender inequality is just one of them, but it's a huge, it has a huge impact in land governance in general. So most countries are now coming up with policies, with strategies, with frameworks to upcome, to uplift women's land rights and, and ensure there will be an equitable access to land and increase land tenure security. So 
I think in general, all countries are somehow finding their own ways to reach there. Well, we have to think as a unique Africa. So that's the first thing we have to do, to have this global continental identity. And I think we, we are getting there, although there are still some challenges. Um, obviously, countries they face being somehow invaded by other people and they will take land and somehow threaten their way of living. But we need to overcome that. We are a continent, we are a people, and if we get together and we get united, I think we all get to take advantage from it. Further, I don't think it will be easy. And if we think about women, I think they still have to struggle even to be competitive in their own country commercial trade area, let alone to the continental trade area. So some challenges to overcome. Okay, uh, Africa has this uh, poor land governance and this uh, would uh, open a gateway for corruption, nepotism and bribe in the areas of land, right? Uh, there are some researches which were presented out there. Uh, some of uh, the participants raised that uh, corruption in the land grabbing is being seen in Africa due to poor land governance. What's your, what's your? It's true. I mean, we still have weak institutions, and when you have weak institutions, corruption tends to take a place. However, if we combine these different levels of land governance, starting from the traditional authorities, community councils, and then you go up into the national level, if you integrate all those levels, I think corruption will have a more difficult way to, to succeed. Um, but we need to capacitate our institutions and we, we need to make people literate about the legal framework because if people were aware of their rights, I don't think corruption would succeed that easily. But as people, we don't know. Rural people do not know how to defend their rights, how to defend themselves, and, and that's where corruption takes place. Uh, my name is Masid Dambano. I'm the Surveyor General for Malawi. Uh, basically, I said here is a conference where we're discussing about land policies uh, in Africa and also how we can uh, implement these policies to make sure that we've got a free trade area for goods in, in Africa. So first of all, we need to have uh, policies unified because we have different countries who are doing different things different ways. So the first uh, uh, intention here is to have a unified approach uh, where we look at how different countries have been doing it and we have uh, policies which can be implemented as Africa as a whole. You know Africa is a, a, an area which uh, has got a lot of land which can be used for agricultural purposes but uh, we are doing different things. So secondly we are looking at the technologies uh, there are so many presentations here which have been made uh, different countries doing different technology approaches so we also want to have apart from having policies which are unified we also have want to have uh, technologies which are unified which can help Africa uh, to have uh, to be a bread basket in agriculture and also we are looking at trade areas how can we make it easier for African countries uh, to export all these products which we uh, produce here in Africa so also uh, we are looking at this uh, conference we are looking at the framework which can support all these establishment so that our laws uh, in Africa and uh, 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 different countries they support uh, this whole framework so that uh, once we start implementing uh, these policies they can be backed by the law. We are also looking at uh, corruption uh, issues uh, because you know there are a lot of there's corruption in Africa and we're looking if we are going to access accelerate this uh, trade uh, in Africa. Then we have also to have policies which uh, look at corruption and how we can combat it and how we can use it to accelerate uh, our trade in Africa. Uh, okay, Madida, you, I mean, uh, research also presented uh, on the way how this uh, land governance helps to have agricultural investment, big agricultural investment in various African nations so as to boost up the ever-demanded African food insecurity. Yes, uh, there have been some presentation on, uh, diff uh, from different countries where they are already implementing uh, big investments called, like mega farms 
uh, where they want to invest in a lot of uh, uh, production in different countries. But still the issue is uh, you see the approaches which are being uh, delivered here are different approaches. We want to have uh, uh, cost-effective approaches and approaches uh, which uh, can be implemented in Africa because some of the approaches maybe cannot be relevant for Africa. So we, we are interested indeed to do big investment as Africa in terms of uh, agriculture productivity. So let's, uh, in this conference we are agreeing on the mechanisms on how we can do this big investment so that at the end of the day we have big farms where we can produce as Africa, export to each other with a free trade and also export outside Africa. Okay, one last question before you leave, uh, Marida. Uh, Africa, uh, uh, I mean, is aspired to, to entertain African continental free trade area and it's ongoing now. To what extent would uh, this uh, land governance uh, play a pivotal role in executing this uh, ambitious plan? Yeah, because uh, if we look at the policies, some of the policies from our countries are the ones which are hindering uh, this free trade to go on between countries. So certain countries cannot do trade freely because of the policies which we have put in the, in the sectors, in different se sectors, including the land sector. So we are looking at the policies. Uh, once we change these policies, we want to make sure that these policies are reflecting on the free trade so that they are in line with the free trade and uh, we can do uh, everything abide by the law and also that uh, these policies will enable different countries to exchange uh, uh, such kind of commitments. Uh, my name is Dr. Gladys Mosomtai. I am from Kenya. Uh, I'm currently a consultant at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Okay, uh, you're here to attend uh, Land Policy Conference in Africa, right? Okay, Africa uh, is being criticized criticized for having poor land management, land policies, land governance, right? What are the ways and uh, means discussed here to alleviate this? Uh, so far there have been interesting uh, suggestions and recommendations that have come out of this conference and one of the big uh, takeaway for me is the coherence of um, policies that we need to put in place in, in, in Africa and especially at a national level and even as we talk in the context of FCFTA, we have to also think about coherence of uh, policies even at the regional level. Uh, so the bigger problem that we're currently facing uh, is we don't have most of our lands are not quite documented but also how to approach this given that most lands in Africa is customary land. Traditional leaders have to engage, people centered and so there's so much nuances that needs to be uh, put in place that would allow us to really uh, be able to exploit the advantages of FCFTA in regard of land and to develop our continent. Uh, another big issue is uh, women uh, in Africa are excluded uh, from having owning land, right? What should be put in place to, to exercise positions uh, of women uh, in, in, in having lands? The, the issue of women is really critical in all aspects of the economy of our continent. And uh, as we all strive to push the agenda of women, we still, as you rightly put it, that women have not access to, uh, access to land, yet they are perhaps the, the, the biggest uh, labor in agriculture, in, uh, they provide all this uh, agriculture. So what we need as a continent as, as of now is to, is to recognize women as, 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 as person as they are. You know, give women, they don't have to be attached to their marriage or their men, give them their soul their identity and see them as a human as they are and so they have access to equal rights as what the men have so if we we see women from that angle i think we can begin to uh, recognize that they also have the right to own land they have a right to decide what they want to because as of now we still have women have no say they're there to be seen and not to be heard so if we begin to just recognize women for human rights as who they are, then we will begin to move forward in this. And it's good to see there's progress that is moving forward in giving women, but of course we still need to put more agenda, push more, and, and I'm glad because I see there's more women voices rising, and so I think the future looks uh, more uh, brighter for women. 
Uh, but there's still much more work to be done to give women access to land. And once they have land, they can have access to resources. Once they have resources, you know, they can educate their family. They say if you educate a woman, you educate a community.